crafters it's amanda here so a couple months back i put out a three crochet hacks video and that one seemed to be doing pretty good so i guess that means y'all like it so i thought today we're gonna go ahead and do some more hacks so today we're gonna cover three yarn hacks and you might notice the hordes of stuff around me and it looks like these are gonna be some pretty wild ideas but i promise they're actually really helpful and they're not as crazy as it looks by the pile of stuff all around me so let's get into it so now that I've cleared the table of everything except for what we need for our first hack, let's get into it. So what this hack is for is it's going to make an easier way to work with your balls of yarn when you're crocheting or knitting or whatever you're doing. Because you've got your nice ball and it's so much easier having it wound into a ball than in the big scheme. But sometimes you'll be working on it and the ball's going all over the place as you're working on it and it gets tangled. So what we're going to make today is we're going to make a nice little yarn ball holder so that way you can just pull your yarn through and not have to worry about losing your skein of yarn. So let's look at what we need. So the most important thing you're going to need is an empty two liter bottle. You're going to want to wash it out, dry it out, and peel the wrappers and everything off and have it all ready for you. And then there's actually three different ways that we can do this because the basic idea with this hack is we're going to take the bottom off of the two liter bottle and then you can drop your yarn down in there, pull the yarn from out here. But the big issue is we want to make sure that the edge of the plastic doesn't snare our yarn. Because who wants to snag your yarn? That would be a bad hack. So there's three ways. My personal favorite way is if you use a wood burner. I've got this nice rounded tip. So the wood burner is the first way. This is my favorite way because it's so easy. But as always, be very careful. And here's a free tip. When you're working with a wood burner, put it on a cookie sheet because that gives you a nice area to work. So with the wood burner, you're just going to take it and you're going to melt through the bottom of the two liter bottle and just slowly work your way around and it'll melt through. So now I'm done with my wood burner and now I have a nice smooth rounded edge that I don't have to worry about my yarn snagging on. So that's what's so nice about the wood burner. That is the first method to do this hack. The second method is a pair of scissors and then you wood burn it after you've cut through with the scissors because obviously with the wood burner you want to be careful that you don't burn yourself and also you want to be careful that you're in a well ventilated area so you're not directly breathing in the melted fumes from the plastic. So you might like this method better because there's less fumes going to be involved and you're more likely to have just a pair of scissors on hand. You can even use your wood burner, melt a hole through it so you can get your scissors to go in and start cutting around. So this is why I was saying we don't just go around and cut with scissors. This is why we use the wood burner or the glue gun, which I'll show in a minute. Because you get all these jagged, sharp edges. See how it's uneven here? These are perfect ways for your yarn to snag. So this is not a good idea. So once you cut it around, you can just take your wood burner and quickly go along the edge and melt the edge of the plastic just really quickly. And it'll get rid of those sharp, jagged edges that would snag your yarn. So here we are, I've melted the edge that I've cut until I felt that it was smooth enough and wouldn't have sharp jagged edges that would snag my yarn. And once again, I want to mention that if you're working with the wood burner to melt the plastic, make sure you're in a well vent ventilated area and be careful because of the heat of the wood burner. So that is our second method for this hack. And our third and final method is pretty similar to this one we just did, but this one doesn't use the wood burner at all because maybe you don't have one or maybe you don't like the idea of melting the plastic. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to cut the bottom off and then coat the sharp jagged edge with hot glue so that way it'll prevent our yarn from snagging, which I'm actually going to still melt through so I can get my scissors in here easily. So now that I've cut the bottom off, I'm just going to put a nice edge of hot glue along it so that way our yarn won't snag along the bottom. Now we gotta wait on it to dry. And when you do the hot glue, what's nice about it is you can do as much or as little hot glue as you want. And you can also trim any edges um, that are still sticking out from when you cut the bottom. And now our glue is dry and it's ready to go. So this first hack, what I love about it is it provides you a cheap and easy way 
to be able to work with your balls of yarn better. You don't have to worry about sitting somewhere in the ball of yarn rolling halfway across the room and then you've got to rewind it and it saves you from that headache. And also another thing I love with this hack is none of these methods take any longer than five minutes. So they're super easy to do. This hack is also great because if you make multiple bottles and you're working with a bunch of different colored yarns, you can pull from one, finish with it, then change to your next color, change to your next color. And you don't have to worry about the balls of yarn getting tangled with each other. And it's a nice way to keep your balls organized. I'll also go ahead and mention that if you don't have a wood burner or a glue gun, I would recommend you invest in them. I really like these ones that I have here. This is Sherbonder's Mini Detail Glue Gun. And this wood burner is by Walnut Hollow. I'll put the links in the description below. These are really great ones. They're not too expensive. Great for beginners. I don't do anything fancy with them, but they're great for a variety of needs. So let's get on to hack two. So hack number two, as I said earlier, I prefer working with yarn that's been wound into balls. So let's say you've got your skein here and you're winding it into a ball and then this starts happening. You get this big gaping hole. So you can see how this starts happening where the inside starts to cave out and you get this big tube. And then as it's happening right here, the middle starts collapsing the more and more you pull. And you can also see things like this start happening where you get these big loops and you almost get knots in the yarn like this. So this is to help with this problem. And then once you start getting to the end, you get this glorious big knot thing that just kind of, the more you wind it, the more tangled it gets, and it's just a mess. So this hack number two is going to address this problem. So for this easy hack, all you're going to need is your skein of yarn that you want to wind into a ball and a sock. I have found that knee socks work the best just because they're long. You can use a fluffy one if it's really big. This is actually a great sock, by the way, one of my favorites. Or you can use a narrower one and it'll hold it better. So what you want to do is you want to make sure first off that this tail end out here, that it's out of the way because you don't want it getting caught and tangled anywhere. So then you're just going to take whichever sock you decide to use and you're going to put the sock around the yarn. Like so. Then you're gonna have this weird looking ball of yarn and a sock. And then just start pulling from the middle and start winding it into a ball. And it might feel a little awkward at first because it's going to be a little bit tighter than normal, but in the end you're gonna find that it's gonna save you from having that big mess at the end. And also what's cool about this is you can load it into our yarn feeder that we made as our first hack. And so it'll help you too as you start winding the ball. Also something else I'll mention right now while I'm working on winding this ball of yarn is since this is a yarn hack video, I'll go ahead and I'll post links to the yarn that I'm using in this video below in the description, um, at least the ones that I know of. I'll go ahead and mention the yarns that I've used so far. The blue one that was a ball that I used in the beginning, that was Red Heart and I believe the color was teal. I don't actually have the packaging, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll look it up. I also had another, um, I had a Vanish Choice yarn. That was the gray one when I was showing how you can use the bottles for three different yarns at the same time. I also had a sugar and cream, nice little green one in there. It's a cotton yarn, really like that one. And the pink one that I was using a moment ago was Karen Simply Soft in Soft Pink. This one I'm using now is, it's actually a Michaels brand that's an acrylic yarn, but it's basically like Red Heart but a little cheaper. And the name of it is called Craft Smart. Um, and Michaels carries it, it's one of their lines. Um, but it's just another acrylic yarn, pretty similar to Red Heart. And then I've got a couple other Red Heart yarns that I'll be using later on in the video. Guys, I'll have you know I just spent 10 to 15 minutes winding this ball of yarn just so I can show you this hack actually works and get to the end. So you're welcome. So as you can see, the sock has continued to shrink down as the yarn has shrunk down. And it's coming out the front a little bit. But as you can see, I can pick this up and flop it around. And I don't have to worry about it getting tangled in a big knot. You know, you might have to kind of hang on to the yarn. I put it out of the yarn feeder bottle that we made earlier just so that way you can see it a little more easily. So you might, it's not a completely foolproof hack. You might get some little knots, but this is a lot easier to deal with than this entire thing ending up in a big knot. This is just kind of knots that are going to be in the yarn. Depends on what brand of yarn you're using, how well it was um, wound in the factory and things like that. But obviously it's better dealing with just a small little knot like this than dealing with this entire end that's collapsed and turning into a giant knot. And done. And I'm going to use a hack from my other crochet hack video. And I'm going to use a bobby pin to secure the tail end into the ball of yarn so I can always find it. 
So I am going to be completely honest with you guys, this is not a foolproof hack and with this one I actually did have a little bit of problems at the end because the way this yarn was run in the factory it had a lot more knots. Um, so the sock method isn't foolproof but it did make it a lot easier because it kept the tail end from crumpling and I was able to pick it up and move it if I needed to while I was still winding the yarn whereas with the pink one if I had, when I picked that thing up it completely was a mess. So the sock again the way it works it just kind of compresses it to hold it so it doesn't turn into a big knot. Um, also just in case you're like wait a minute did the hack actually not work? I've done this on some other yarn and I did this on a ball of Red Heart and it worked perfectly. I was so happy with how it worked. So it is a little hit or miss depending on how well the ball of yarn was run in the factory but even if there are some knots just in the yarn already it's way easier than when we did it with this and ended up with a huge mess. So now let's look at hack number three. So this third hack is for when you've got a nice new skein of yarn. Um, this is Red Heart. I do know that for sure. One of those super savers. The packaging says the color is Aran, like A-R-A-N, Aran, Aran, however you say it. But I'm actually not sure that this is the color it actually is because sometimes I swap around yarn labels if I need a random yarn label to keep a ball a skein from unwinding. But anyways, I'll find out what the correct one is and I'll put it below. So sometimes what happens is you f either can't find the center piece, which is what happened with this one here, because I always prefer to pull from the center, or else you start pulling from the center and almost immediately there's a knot and you can't get it undone. So then you've got to pull from the outside. And what happens when you pull from the outside is it rolls all over the place, as you can see. So that's no fun. No one wants to work with yarn that's rolling around even more than just a ball will. And obviously you can't load this into our nice little bottle that we made. So heck. So for this one, you're just going to need two things. You're going to need either like a plastic container like this or a cardboard box. You can use either one depending on how big your skein of yarn is. This skein of yarn is a little too wide for this. So today I'm going to use the nice cardboard box. And then the second thing you're going to need is either a dowel, a stick you found in your yard, or if you've got knitting needles on hand you can use knitting needles. Now I am a crocheter and I love crochet but I will say that knitting needles have their place and their places to help with this hack so you can keep crocheting. Just kidding. Knitting's cool if you knit I'm just joking. So the way this hack works is you're going to have your box and I'm going to use the knitting needles today and so you can just take the needles and stick it in through the center of the yarn and I'll put one on either side. And then this box, you can see it already has these nice notches here. Or if you were using a container like this, you could run it through the plastic holes. But then you're just going to set this little contraption you made in the notches. And then when you need to pull your yarn off, you just work from here. And you don't have to worry about your skein of yarn rolling away. And it just comes off really nicely without unwinding at all. So there you have it. Now you have three yarn hacks and hopefully this will help you whether you crochet or whether you knit. Hopefully it'll make your life a little bit easier. You'll be able to use these hacks. And if you like these hacks, go ahead and share it with your friends. Help somebody else out. Um, also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe below. And always please comment below with more ideas if you've got other hack ideas you'd like to see. Or just other questions and video suggestions for me in general. I want to hear from you. Go ahead and let me know. And until next time, happy crafting. So I thought since you guys keep watching me that I'd let you know a little bit more about myself. Um, and the thing I'm going to share today is I am an expert at doing hair. I am so talented. What can I say, you know? So I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I did my hair today. Voila! I have creatively named this hairstyle the... Wait for it. It's 80 degrees outside and I am a redhead who is sensitive to the heat and so I didn't want my hair touching my neck. Yes, that's the name. Very creative, I know. So it's a great hairstyle, very easy. You do a ponytail, and on the last time, you leave it in a loop. Don't pull the tails all the way through, and you too can wear this amazing hairstyle and beat the heat.